Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing our September favorites. I have a really good mixture this month. I'm excited to share with you beauty, fragrance, have some books finally. Did a lot of reading this month and a lot of really good reads. So without further ado, we're gonna jump right in starting with the beauty and there's a bunch of new things as well as something that I mentioned last month that I just have to <laughs> give another shout out to because honestly, it is the best setting spray I've ever used. And I have to start off with it because I finished the mini. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I bought the mini thinking I wasn't going to care for it. It'd just be another setting spray. I just wanted to try it. So I always get the minis now and I absolutely love it. Fell in love with it to the point where it is honestly the best setting spray I have ever used in my life. This locks my makeup, seals my makeup, and it does have that airbrush quality that no other setting spray truly does for me. This really makes the most beautiful canvas. So I had to go to Sephora and pick up the full size. So ran out of this this month, picked up the full size. I could honestly throw away every single setting spray I own at this point and just keep this. And that is a huge claim. <laughs> have a lot of setting sprays, but this beats them out, all of them, every single one. <laughs> this is the best. So I had to mention it because I'm still so obsessed with that product. I can't see anything beating it, <laughs> honestly. Like it is perfection to me. It was made for my skin. It truly makes everything look better, last longer. Everything it claims it does. And it gives me that airbrush quality that I, really love. If you watched my last week video, my empties, you would have seen that I ran out of my original Laura Mercier powder, which I absolutely love. And I said I would repurchase in the future. And I actually got my first ever PR package from Laura Mercier. And it came with their new translucent honey powder. Wasn't sure how I would like this. And I love this. <laughs> this is so good. It has a color to it, so it's not translucent but it isn't as deep as a traditional banana powder. It kind of is that perfect in between for me that's not too fair and not really yellow on my skin. So this was said to be made for medium skin tones, which I do have when I have a tan right now. I am my natural skin tone, so I don't have as much color. I can still have this work, but honestly this works a little bit better when I'm a little bit deeper. So when you guys see me with a tan, this is perfect. I will use this underneath my eyes or I can set my whole face with it. It just has a light tint to it, but mainly I use this for underneath my eyes for brightening and to clean up any of my contour areas and just set the places that I typically need. I don't necessarily need to set my whole face, but mainly just the areas I wanna brighten like my under eye or T-zone or just to clean up contour is what I find this perfect for. So I really love the original and I was really actually surprised about this because typically I don't like the traditional banana powders on my skin, but this is that perfect tone for me that's not too yellow that really works for a medium skin tone. So I'm very happy with this. It's a new product, new shade that they have. So if you have a true medium skin tone, I think you're really gonna like this. This honestly was the month of complexion. I don't think this is gonna surprise any of you guys if you watch my full review of Rare Beauty. I truly put it to the test, all the products, and these were the standout to me. So I absolutely love, and this is my number one, is the primer, which is shocking. I didn't hear too many other people really rave about this primer. They're just like, it's average, but to me, this is above average. <laughs> this is one of the best primers I've ever used. And I did get the mini in this, but I calculated the big size compared to this, and it actually, you may as well just get the mini if you're going to purchase this, at least in Canada, in terms of the cost per milliliter. It was like $1.20 for the mini and $1.21 for the full size. So you save a cent, but really it probably works out to be even. <laughs> Enough about that. If you are curious about the Rare Beauty Primer, this really does a great job at illuminating the skin and it plays beautifully with all my other foundations, which I like in a product. I like when I find something that really plays nicely with other things so I can use it with my favorite products. This makes my makeup smooth and radiant. It does hydrate my skin, but I don't find it overly hydrating to the point of me being greasy. I'm more normal right now than normal to dry and this is honestly my perfect primer for me right now. So I've been very happy, very pleased. I'm already using a ton of this up because I've been using this on the daily. And of course, 
you guys know I have to mention the Rare Beauty Foundation. These are my top three from Rare Beauty. So second place would have to be the foundation. And you guys are probably wondering why I have two now, because if you watched my review, I only had 290N, which is my tan shade. And then I picked up 210N, which is a light medium, and that is my natural skin tone. So the 210N doesn't have as much orange as this. I find that the neutrals in this range do pull a little bit orange, but 210 is really perfect for me, the end. This foundation is so beautiful. I was actually kind of shocked that I liked it so much because it is on the lighter coverage side. It claims it's a medium buildable, but I would say this is light coverage buildable to a medium. I wouldn't say this is full on full coverage and I love a medium coverage. So this can build up to medium, which I feel like I have right now. It gives a beautiful glow to the skin. It looks natural, weightless, wears well, which is all the things that I look for in a foundation. It really has to make my skin look smooth, even everything out, not patch off, not fade away. It just has to wear really, really well. And this definitely does for me, regardless if I use it with that amazing setting spray or with the primer, this wears well on its own. So I have been really enjoying this formula. Love the packaging, how simple it is. It's actually one of the more affordable foundations at Sephora. I don't find any of the products affordable, but in terms of Sephora priced brands at Sephora, Rare Beauty is one of the more affordable brands at Sephora. So I'm so happy that I fell for that foundation because I picked up another shade because I love it so much. You guys know, when I pick up two shades, my tan and my natural skin tone, I'm in love. And then this was another shocking love for me. It is the Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizer and I have the shade Mesmerize, which is this beautiful rose gold bronzy shade. I love this. And the thing I love about this is that it's so sheer and hydrating. When I first saw swatches of this, I thought it would be like the Cover FX drops, which are very metallic, which I don't honestly care for. I know a lot of people love that metallic quality, but in a liquid highlight, I love it just to be like this. This has the most beautiful natural glow to it and I find it doesn't emphasize any kind of texture. It really just smooths out my skin in that area, which I personally need with a highlight. So that product has worked out amazing for me. The only thing is that I can't use it on top of powder, so I have to be mindful of my placement of it during my makeup routine. I have to remember to put it on before my foundation sets. So that's the only thing. It's a little bit tricky as long as I'm on my game and remembering I'm using that, I need to use it before I set my face. So I've been loving that. And then my last complexion product is from Maybelline. And this is also a very, very sheer coverage product, which I've been getting down for at the end of the summer. I've just been really loving a more sheer overall complexion with spot concealing with concealer. So that is what I've been doing with this. And this is the Maybelline Dream BB Fresh Skin Hydrating Beauty Balm. This is an eight in one skin perfecter. My shade is on the deep side for me, but I'm gonna explain how and why I went that way. So this is in medium deep sheer tint. So you're gonna say that's too dark for me and yes, if this was a full coverage product, it would be much too dark. You can tell on my hand that is dark right now. But for me, since my face is much lighter than my body, I need to compensate by going a little bit darker. And then that evens everything out. You can tell it's not that dark. And then I'm more even. And then I just go in, in the places where I need that coverage with a full coverage concealer, like my Dose of Colors I've been loving, and just add that in the places I want more coverage, blend it out, and it gives me the perfect, really natural, beautiful, even where I need it, finish. So I've been loving that for most days. And then for lips, the last category for makeup, and then we're moving on to fragrance of books. Actually, I have one more thing before I forget. <laughs> I have to mention these brushes. I purchased these myself from BH Cosmetics. This is the collaboration with Nazanin Kavari on YouTube. She's absolutely gorgeous. And as soon as I saw her release these brushes, I knew I had to pick them up. The case it comes with is gorgeous. It's black and has this pop of green inside, but look at these brushes. You get nine brushes for $27 US. Can't really beat that. And look how beautiful they are. It just has the most gorgeous shape to it. Mine are freshly washed. 
so that's why they don't have any product on them, but I have been using them. I just wanted them to look pretty for the video. You get five face brushes, four eye brushes, and they've been working out really great for me. You really can't beat the price. They're super soft. They're just a gorgeous brush. So if you're looking for a nice set of brushes, these are the best <laughs> brushes I've ever seen BH do and they're affordable. Plus you get the case, like you can't, you can't beat it. So I had to mention it here, but I will be using these in full in my next makeup tutorial because I love them so much. You're gonna be seeing me use these a lot. In my daily life, I grab this and go. These are my go-to right now. Now for lips. Starting off with these from MAC. These are the Powder Kiss Liquid Lip Colors. I love the Powder Kiss lipsticks when they came out with, I like these more. They also came out with Powder Kiss eyeshadows, which I did not care for, but these liquid lip colors are so beautiful, the formula. So I have three shades here I wanted to share with you. I have Date Maker, Mullet Over, and Devoted to Chili. These have been my most used ones. They have a whip consistency to them. They're like the souffles by Rare Beauty, but they have a better consistency. They're not as drying. They also don't wear as long as the Rare Beauty ones. So you're gonna compromise wear when you get something that's not as dry on the lips. So these have an even more moussey consistency and they don't fully set on your lips, but that is the price you pay for comfort, <laughs> I feel like. But if you want something that doesn't transfer, you're probably not gonna like these, but if you want something comfortable on your lips that really give that smooth quality to them because they have that whipped consistency that really smooths out your lips, then you're gonna wanna check these out. They're really nice, comfortable, as I said, and I absolutely love the formula. I know some people are hit and miss with that sort of formula, but for me, it's a hit. Personally, that's the best kind of whipped formula I've ever tried in terms of a lip color. And then the last thing for lips, I had to mention these. Not all of these are my favorite colors, but I was sent these in PR, so I'm just gonna go over my favorites. These are the Maybelline Lifter Glosses, and which one am I wearing on my lips? I'm wearing Amber on my lips, which is the perfect fall gloss. It has just enough pigment, super glossy, feel incredible. Uh, I love these. They're not sticky in the slightest. They just have the best sort of pigmentation. The packaging reminds me of KKW glosses, but the formula reminds me of Fenty. So if you're really into the Fenty gloss bombs, a few of the shades here I find are dupes, like Diamond Milk and Fussy. You can find dupes in the Maybelline ones. These two colors have shimmer in it, remind me of Fenty Diamond Milk and Fussy. These two colors, they are so beautiful. So if you like that sheer sort of gloss with shimmer in it, you'd like these ones with the shimmer. Also, if you like the KKW Bronze Gloss, this is a really good dupe for it too. And this is in the shade Crystal. And then the other shades that I like are more of an opaque color with no shimmer in them. So more like a cream, like the one I'm wearing right now, which I think is the perfect gloss color for fall. So I have been really enjoying those. The only thing, and not even in this one I find, but in a couple of the shades, they have a smell that I don't care for. Honestly, most people aren't gonna notice it, but someone pointed out that it's a fake coconut smell. So only some of the colors, I truly notice it, but it goes away on my lips, so that's a plus. But I just don't like the fake coconut kind of scent to them. It is supposed to be like a sweet sort of smell, so I'm sure most of you are gonna like it. But for me, it's just a couple of the glosses, I can really notice it more. This one I don't in amber perfectly fine with. I had this one on my list for a while and you guys told me that I needed it for fall when I did my fall fragrance video, so I decided to pick it up. This is the Replica by The Fireplace and this is my first Replica fragrance. I just got the spray travel size one because they're expensive, <laughs> so I just picked up this one to try. And the, whoops, throwing the lid around. <laughs> this is quintessential fall fragrance. This smells unisex to me. It's really deep and musky. It has those woody notes that fireplace makes sense. And oh, it just smells like the most sexy, cozy fragrance ever. I feel like so many people are gonna love it and I see why so many people do. For me personally though, this is more of a home scent for me than a body scent because I personally like something, I guess a sweeter musk. <laughs> I'd have to describe it as because this is very, very woody, but I still love it and so happy I picked it up. I probably wouldn't get a full size of this though, but I would pick up the candle because I saw that they have one in that. So that would be perfect kind of home scent for me. 
And then this, oh my goodness. If you guys watch my fall fragrance video, I love Givenchy Linterdy. It is my top fall fragrance. It smells so good. And then I got the intense version in PR. You guys, they have this in intense. Look at how gorgeous this bottle is. I know it's just black and simple, but this is classic. Like this screams fall elegance to me. If you like Givenchy Linterdy, please smell this. This is definitely a stronger version of it. Like it is intense. I'd have to look up the notes. I feel like it has more of a patchouli, like that's what really gives it that depth <laughs> to me, but it still has that beautiful floral sweetness to it. And this is just my version of a perfect fall fragrance. Absolutely nothing like the replica by the fireplace. So if you like those kind of scents more, this is nothing like it. This is a me in a bottle scent. And as I said, if you like the original, definitely check out the intense. Like this is its older sister. It's just such a great fragrance. And I'll put up the notes for you guys just in case you're curious, but again, I rave about Linterdy all the time and Givenchy did no wrong for that one. The Intense, amazing. And now for books, I have actually four <laughs> to mention this month. I really got back into reading. One I'm finishing today, but I already know that I would recommend it. It's so good, unless the ending is so bad. <laughs> Then I'll update you guys, but right now I feel like it's going to be good. Starting off with the first book I read, I read Circe, which is about Greek mythology. You don't really need a background in my opinion to it, even though I do know quite a bit about Greek mythology. I took a course in university and I've always been interested. My dog's name is Hera, so I do know a bit about Greek mythology, so that book for me personally, was just such a good story. And I love the magical quality to it. Also the relationships built up in that and the characters. It was very character driven for me, just an all around great Greek mythology story. And I don't feel like you need to be into Greek mythology to enjoy that book or have any background on it. In my personal opinion, I just feel like it stands on its own and you'd be able to understand what's going on but I think I enjoyed it that much more because I do know a little bit about it. And then I read Untamed, which was absolutely incredible. I cannot recommend that book enough. Probably my favorite book I've read this year. It is that good. And if you have not heard about Untamed, definitely go look it up. It's gonna empower you. I think everyone would enjoy reading that book. I left reading that book extremely motivated. It just really appealed to me because I really have the same sort of view on life and thought process as the author for that. And it's just very uplifting and empowering. So I encourage you to read that if you have not already. I know so many people have and have raved about it, but I am another one of the people <laughs> who are gonna rave about it. So five star for sure for that book. As I said, probably my favorite book I've read all year. And then I'm finishing up Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter right now. And this is one of those thriller mysteries that are dark and twisted, which is honestly the type of book that I would personally write if I ever wrote a book. So I really enjoyed this. It's very dark. A lot of very intense subject matter in here, but if you're into that kind of thriller that's super dark and twisted, I would recommend reading this. So this has kept me on my toes. I've been absolutely enthralled with this book. As I said, I'm almost done and I'm going to be finishing it up after this video, in all honesty. And then what I, I got confused because I have my next book here that I'm gonna read. I picked up The End of Her, which I always have good luck with this author's books. So that will be my next read in case you guys wanna follow along with my reading, but I always have my Goodreads account down below, which is just my name, Cheryl Kozielewski, if you want to follow along with what I'm reading. That's everything for this month. Great month, as you can tell, good books, good makeup, good fragrance. I'm happy. So that's gonna be it. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. As always, let me know what your favorites were in the comment section below, as well as book recommendations. I'm always looking for good thriller mysteries, as you can tell, or really anything you consider to be good. I'll be willing to check out. If you haven't subscribed already, definitely do so by hitting that red button below, the bell if you wanna be notified of all my future videos, and I will see you guys in my next one.